here's a different video. It's not as nerdy as the stuff I usually do. It's more just practical examples. Built a bunch of things and tried to break them. That, if you didn't know, I'm a guitar player. And I was reading on a couple forums, which I try not to do because most of these guitar forums are filled with numb nuts spouting unsupported nonsense. But I needed to buy some new glues for a couple projects. And I wanted to see some practical experience with the different types of tight bonds and polyurethane glues and epoxies and that sort of thing. Some of the things that I read on the forums were like, uh, this type of glue sucks for this type of thing, and then they used it completely wrong. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to do my own tests on this. And I thought, since I'm doing it, I'm just gonna run a camera and I'll put it up here in case it's useful to anybody. I imagine it would fall most into the purview of people that are uh, building guitars or guitar type instruments or maybe furniture or something like that. Now the glues I tested were Tight Bond 2, standard or uh, heavy duty cyanoacrylate, just the heavy duty crazy glue, JB Weld, the slow set JB Weld, not the fast stuff, and Gorilla Glue, just the standard polyurethane foaming Gorilla Glue. Now I already knew how Tight Bond and Gorilla Glue and cyanoacrylate dealt um, wood to wood. I didn't know how JB Weld would deal wood to wood, and I didn't know what type of clamping force you would need while it's setting, if any. And I didn't know the, the type of thickness you would put in the joint, how much squeeze out you want, those types of things. So I tested those. And then the others I wanted to test wood against aluminum. And I especially wanted to test these glues out that the people were poo-pooing. So what I did was I took a piece of aluminum, cleaned it off with two tiny grit sandpaper, and then I keyed it with a file and with 80 grit sandpaper, and then made sure that the surface was clean with a solvent and a degreaser, and then applied the glues as per the manufacturer's website, and then tested them out with variations from there. After that, I let them cure as long as I was supposed to, a little bit longer actually, just to be sure. Then I tried to break them apart with my hands. If I couldn't do that, I'd try to break it apart with a pair of pliers. If I couldn't do that, I'd put it in a vise and honk on it with pliers or smash it with a hammer, whichever it took. So, spoiler alert, some of them were pretty good. So, here's what I did. I used my little sacrificial milling clamp here, and I stuck an eraser on one side so that I made sure I didn't clamp things down too hard and it was a little bit even there, and then clamped it down until it was set. And I tried to stick to the manufacturer's recommendations as much as possible on the clamping pressure and time. Now, the first test was the regular old, plain old, yellow old Type Bond 2. I wasn't too hopeful for this, and I wasn't disappointed. It snapped off fairly easily, although it did hold on meh, okay. And there was a little bit of tear out of the wood, which means that the glue there was actually stronger than the wood in the one place. But for the most part, it snapped off pretty easily. Next up was a polyurethane Gorilla Glue. And as you know, this stuff foams up, especially in contact with water. So I only wetted one of the pieces ever so slightly and put it on there and I was really surprised at how well it held on. You can see here I'm really struggling to get this off of there. Now I wasn't sure if that was because it was particularly flexible, but it was obviously very effective. So I busted out the big guns, pulled the clamp back out, and I brought my precision adjusting device to give it a couple love taps. Eventually it broke off and I was able to look at the grain tear out. You can see right here, it took a good portion of the wood along with it, meaning the glue was definitely stronger than the wood at that point. And this is, mind you, a chunk of rock maple. And here's where the misconceptions with Gorilla Glue come from. You see how soft this foam stays. So you don't want it to foam up too much and you don't want any kind of gap because otherwise you're just gonna end up with a weak glue bond. You're gonna to have to clamp that a little bit, but not so hard that you get rid of all of the glue in the seam and just go by ear, and it makes an incredibly strong bond. Okay, so next up, crazy glue. Now, I was fairly certain this wasn't gonna work. The problem with cyanoacrylate glue is that it does break down over time, so I wouldn't use it necessarily for permanent fixtures, uh, unless it's something that's not gonna take a whole lot of sheer force. It also is very hard, so it's not good with shock. Now, I just barely put this clamp on here. It's not really tightening very much at all. I just wanted to make sure that the piece didn't move in there. And then I just honked on it like this, and it just sort of broke right off. So again, Crazy Glue has a million uses, but this isn't its strong suit. But now onto the fun stuff, JB Weld, the duct tape of the glue world. For those of you who don't know, JB Weld is a two-part epoxy and they have what they call the steel and the hardener. 
Now, the, the steel is just the epoxy itself, and it does have some metal content in there. And you mix that up with equal parts hardener, or you can experiment with different percentages. And since the one part is white and the other part is black, they make a dark gray when you're finished. And that's about the color that it ends up with when it dries. So for this first example, I just spaded it on there. And then when I got it completely covered, I scraped it down until it was fairly thin. Now you're supposed to put this on fairly thick. They recommend up to about an eighth of an inch, but I wanted to see how it would handle if I treated it like a regular wood glue. I only applied the epoxy to the wood side and then just pressed the aluminum plate on there and clamped it in the vise. Now again, since this experiment was to see how it reacted if I treated it like a regular wood glue, I did clamp it harder than you probably should for an epoxy, and I wanted to get maximum coverage on the inside and a little bit of squeeze out. I left it to clamp for about four to six hours, and then I let it sit 24 hours before I tried to honk on it at all. Honk on it, I did. This stuff was not going anywhere. So back in the vise it goes, and out come the pliers. It did eventually bust loose here, but as you can see, it took most of the wood along with it. Definitely the best of the group. Definitely strong enough to use for this. Since now I just had a pliable strip of maple, I was able to peel it up off the one side and see what happened. And I got a pretty decent amount of grain tear out over on the left, as you can see. And then I did squeeze out a little bit more of the, of the uh, epoxy than I would have liked to on the right, but it didn't really matter, as you saw. So there you go. If you want to see how JB Weld deals wood to wood, stick around till after the outro that's coming up, and I have a bonus section where I show you that. I know it wasn't a particularly controlled experiment like I usually do, but I kind of wanted to do something that was practical and just sort of honked on something with pliers. And like I said, I just happened to be doing these experiments for my own benefit, and I thought I would turn on a camera and then make a short video for you guys in case it helps anybody else out there. But it just goes to show, don't believe everything you read on the internet. And these glues are a couple bucks a bottle. You can always grab them and test them yourself. All right, free bonus content to go along with the free video that you've been watching. I prepped as usual. I used 220 grit and then keyed a little bit with 80 grit. And one of the reasons that I dug trying to do wood to wood with JB Weld is that it is a dark color. So I thought it would make for an interesting look to the glue seam. And of course I tried it with a thin seam and with a slightly thicker seam. Same arrangement as before, a few hours in a clamp and then leave it to cure for a day. And then to see if I could pull it apart with my hands, which I could. But as you can see here, most of the tear out there was wood. It took gigantic chunks of the wood with it. And then in the sections that weren't as strong, that was just because the, the epoxy was pretty thin there. Now for the thicker seam. I suspect that since we're not going to get to the parts that didn't hold very well in the last piece, the thicker seam was going to be even better. So I followed the same method I did with the last one and tried to break it apart with my hands. Quite unsuccessfully. Yep. Yep. Not budging. That means it's back to Senior Clamp. So I broke out the pliers and had at it and eventually I did get it to separate. But as you can see, that's mostly because the wood failed and the epoxy joint actually remained fairly intact. Definitely happy with these results. So anyhow, thanks for checking it out. Catch you in the next video.